Imagine being forced to go to work every day and, as part of the job, profess something that you absolutely don't believe. Now, imagine if you're a priest who has to profess a belief in God, but you don't believe in God. Yes, there are some of them, and they're the subject of a study by Daniel Dennett and Linda Lascola from Tufts University, titled, Preachers Who Are Not Believers. Given the modernization of today's clergy, and the resistance of many non-believing preachers to participate in the study, this may be only the tip of the iceberg. Welcome to Talk Today. Subscribe to keep us dancing. Here's the testimony of, Jack, a Southern Baptist preacher. Okay, this God created me. It's a perfect God that knows everything, can do anything. And somehow it got messed up, and it's my fault. So he had to send his son to die for me to fix it. And he does. And now I'm supposed to beat myself to death the rest of my life over it. It makes no sense to me. Don't you think a God could come up with a better plan than that? Dennett and La Scola conducted unstructured interviews with five non-believing priests. They are a fascinating, and rare, insight into people who hold one set of beliefs, and yet live their lives by another set of beliefs. Surprisingly, two of the clergy lost their faith, in part, by reading atheist books by Sam Harris and Christopher Hitchens. One priest commented, I tell you, the book that just grabbed my mind and just twisted it around, was Christopher Hitchens' God is not great. It was shocking, some of that stuff. The throws and jabs against faith and stuff. I would think, he's crazy. But then I'd say, no. Step back and read it for what it is. The preacher's testimony makes a sad but enlightening read. The road to eroded faith is tortuous, but often involved exposure to biblical scholarship at the seminary or graduate school. Faced with the notion that the Bible is a human construct, and not the inerrant word of God, several of these preachers began to question everything. Why do these preachers stay in the faith and on the job? Three reasons, mostly. One is financial. What else could they do with their training if they left the ministry? Often they have neither equity, living in church-owned houses, nor pensions. Another, and perhaps more important, reason is that an admission of unbelief would shock and disappoint their friends and family. This is a very powerful motive, for facing the truth would rip asunder your network of social and family support. Finally, many of these preachers like their work, especially the part of the job that involves helping troubled people. Let's hear from Jack again. And that's what people told me my best skills were, dealing with people. I can be with somebody and genuinely have empathy with them, and concern and love and help them get through a difficult situation. And every time that I did it, those people thought that I was wonderful. And they would just bend over backwards to tell me, thank you. That was one of my strengths. There's absolutely no doubt that faith and religious institutions have provided important help for those in need or in trouble. Such help doesn't, of course, prove the existence of God or support any of the fact claims of faith. So, how does this study help us to understand the theory of knowledge? Spend some time thinking about the knowledge questions arising from this video before watching the second part of this series on non-believing clergy.